What's up guys, Metal 571 here, and today I'm going to be talking about my first AMP review here. This is the iFi Micro IDSD Black Label. And so I'm going to go over um, the accessories and the features you get, because there are a lot of both of those things, for the most part, um, in this review. So let's get started here. So uh, let's go over the accessories that this thing comes with first. Uh, because there are, as I said, a lot. Uh, first of all, you get the bag, which uh, it works pretty well, looks nice, you know, decent quality. And since this is a, uh, at the time of filming this review, it's about a $455 product, uh, basically a portable headphone amplifier with lots of power to drive whatever you need. Uh, it's nice that they include a bag. <laughs> it's always uh, it's always welcome. You get this rubber piece, which uh, if you're using this against a, uh, a phone, so if like you're putting your phone up against it and you want that to be the setup, this kind of protects in between the two. And you also have um, some feet, same kind of rubberized material here, some feet that you can stick onto the bottom of this thing if you want it to stay in place, which is always good. You get some of these rubber bands here, which will help you attach the, <clears throat> the iFi to, again, your phone with that uh, other rubberized piece in between, ideally. Um, you get a blue USB, I think this is a USB 3 cable actually. So many accessories on my desk here. Um, so this will connect from the USB A male on the back. This is a USB A female. And uh, this is how you basically connect it or charge it from the computer and uh, goes to USB A on this side mail. So you get that. You get a quarter inch adapter, which is always handy. You get a three and a half millimeter stereo to stereo cable, which would, uh, you could use for if you wanted to just plug your phone or whatever into this thing or the output of some other um, DAC. You could put plug into the front here. There's an input. There's a USB B female to USB A female adapter. There's a another USB B female to A female adapter, but longer. <laughs> and there's a stereo RCA to RCA cable. And finally, there's a adapter that goes from uh, Toslink to Mini Toslink. So this is for optical cables since uh, there is an optical input at the back here. All right, so that's the accessories. Let's talk about the amp itself. So we'll start in the front here. You get the quarter inch headphone output. This is an extra bass switch, which uh, tries to make up for the open back, uh, some open back headphones loss of bass, particularly dynamics. Obviously, if you've seen my channel before, that tends to be a problem. Um, the three and a half millimeter input that I was just referring to a second ago, you get a 3D plus button, which tries to emulate more of a speaker sound stage rather than a headphone sound stage. And uh, this is the volume button. It clicks on and off. And uh, there's an LED back here to tell you that it's, that it's on or it's charging, depending on the color. Uh, let's go around the side here. We got three switches. So the red switch allows eco, normal, or turbo power. So you usually want to start on Eco here, no matter what headphones you have, or you're probably going to die because <laughs> the normal mode on this thing was so powerful that I probably could destroy my hearing with my HD 800 using it. Um, and turbo mode is insane. Um, this thing will do 4 watts to 16 ohm loads on turbo mode, which is, yes, enough to drive your HE6, I would say. Uh, polarity. And you can adjust, which I'm not even sure why they put that on here, but you can adjust the polarity of the signal coming out. Um, and then there's the DAC filter. There's bit perfect, minimum phase, and standard mode. I'm going to link to an article that iFi sent me to give you more information on that. Basically, it's the DAC filtering uh, output uh, setting that you can change around in real time if you want. On the bottom, there's more switches. So there's a IEM match. It goes from off high sensitivity to ultra sensitivity. So basically this is an attenuator um, for the power level. So you use like eco and then you would set this down lower because it could still be too much power um, to like adjust the volume easily with like very sensitive IEM. So they have that covered for you. 
Um, and then there's a switch on over here, which goes from direct to preamp. So that turns the, there's a RCA out on the back, which I'll get to in a second. And this adjusts whether the volume control in the front controls the uh, pre-out volume back here, or if it's just maxed at a line level. And on the back, <laughs> there's a spit-if in-out, so you can feed this optical or coax, or it will output coax to another device, depending on what's plugged in. There's a RCA stereo out here, which I was just talking about with the preamp versus direct mode, and then there's the USB input here. And then last but not least, there is a charging port on the side, and that's to charge an external device. It'll output five volts, 1.5 amps. So as you can see, how much time I've already taken up by talking about just the features and accessories of this thing, it is a jack of all trades. Now, what is this really used for? Of course, this is a portable amplifier. It's pretty big, but it is small enough that you might be able to fit it into a large pocket along with your phone. And uh, what I thought was really interesting when iFi contacted me to review some of their products was that um, th this has a huge amount of power, but it's also portable. I've never seen something with huge amounts of power, enough to drive like an HE6 in your pocket to be pocketable and run on battery while doing that. And that's pretty cool. So that's the main reason why I uh, chose this one to review of their product line. And it really does do that job well. Like I said, on normal mode, it was way more than powerful enough. And on turbo mode, it was actually pretty sensitive um, to adjust the volume <laughs> when choosing it with my HD800. Um, now, as far as the extra bass, I guess I'll talk about these a little bit. Extra bass plus is quite a lot of bass, quite a lot more bass boost than I apply to my 800 already, or even the 600, I think. So it's, it's, you know, it's nice to have an analog implantation. By the way, these are not DSP, as they say in the manual. These are actually analog circuits, which is pretty cool. Um, the X-Base and the 3D. And the uh, X-Base works well. Doesn't uh, attenuate the volume, just boosts the bass quite a bit. Uh, maybe more than you need, maybe not. But it's nice to have it. And then the 3D Plus, I didn't really find that useful. But um, maybe people in the studio might find it more useful as it kind of emulates more of a... More of it sounds like the, the there's a speakers to your left and right rather than like a headphone sound stage. So it's might be useful for some people um, who are doing who are used to listening to studio monitors rather than headphones. So there's all of that. There's the power aspect. Now I'm I know I'm known for talking about the sound, but when it comes to amplifiers, you guys probably already know that I'm not as much an amp guy as I am a headphone guy. And I built an AB uh, setup, actually, to uh, test so that I could review amps reliably and um, have an absolute AB back and forth immediate uh, switchover uh, setup. So I have that, and when I tested this against my Modi 2 Uber and Magni 2 Uber stack, I didn't notice enough of a difference between the two in terms of sound quality that it would have colored my review of a headphone. So take that for what it is. Um, that's what I think about the sound quality here. I didn't have any issues with it at all. It also supports crazy formats that I've not even tried, um, like DSD and DXD, in addition to, of course, the usual 44K through 192K, and uh, even higher. I think this guy does 32-bit 384K uh, quite easily, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Uh, so it'll do that on USB. Obviously, the spit of in will be limited to 192K. But uh, in USB, I didn't notice any issues with USB noise either. So it's uh, it's pretty solid unit. I mean, for 499 or 450 or what about that much it's running, considering it's significantly more powerful than your classic stack of uh, Modi 2 Magni 2 Ubers, um, and it's portable, I think that's a pretty reasonable price for what you're getting here. So there you go, guys. That's the iFi Micro IDSD Black Label. And uh, I hope you guys pick this up if you need a portable solution that drive very difficult to drive headphones. I think it's see that this would be amazing for use on trips if you want to pair with a laptop and just totally avoid the, the crappy laptop outputs and be able to drive. Very, very difficult to drive headphones. It'll do it. It'll actually do it, no problem. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next one.